What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, don't worry, we're gonna start off with a little Note stuff, but the Galaxy Note 8 was officially announced. It looks like a great addition to the Note family, and in classic Samsung style, you know, they threw a barb or two at Apple, including the classic headphone jack one. Guess what you can do with those earphones? That's right. You can plug them into the standard earphone jack. Yes. But you know what, I still want them to bring it back to the iPhone, just saying. Now the best thing about the Note 8 is its dual lens camera where you'll be able to adjust the amount of background blur before you capture a photo and even after. The other cool feature, both lens have optical image stabilization, but then they decided to compare what an iPhone 7 Plus looks like taking a video clip compared to the Note 8. But come on, Samsung, really? Like I have never seen an iPhone video taken by a grown man or even a child that shaky. Unless we're talking about Brian Cooley, he takes horrible photos. So I'm calling BS on that comparison, Samsung. And you know what you're getting? A bad apple. <laughs> and this is the part where I read the comments to see how many of you wrote, just make sure your Note 8 doesn't explode. Yeah, we get those all the time. Now, Mac Forever is reporting that Apple's upcoming iPhone keynote will take place on September the 12th, according to their carrier sources. They say carriers have been notified when to expect the announcement to prepare for inventory and marketing the device. Now, historically, Apple's done it within the first two weeks of September, but we'll wait until we hear an official date confirmation, but the timing would be right. Okay, the biggest feature people ask me about is the new iPhone's facial recognition. You know, how will it work in different lighting conditions? What about with the phone at different angles? And how does Apple Pay work without the presence of a Touch ID button anymore? Well, a report from the Korea Herald now claims the new facial recognition scanner with 3D sensors will be able to sense a user's face in the millionths of a second. Now, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, the man behind almost every legit Apple rumor we have, wrote in early August that Apple will pitch Face ID as faster, more secure, and more accurate than Touch ID, according to people inside Apple. It's the iPhone tech that I'm most curious to see in action, so we'll see how well it really works in person. All right, we're expecting to see the new Apple Watch at Apple's September event, and all signs point to LTE being the new feature for it. MPD collected data from over 5,000 smartwatch owning respondents and found a few interesting things. Now, as of June this year, nearly 9% of US consumers aged 18 and over own a smartwatch. The millennial generation has the highest smartwatch ownership at 13%, and the male to female split of ownership is the closest it's ever been, with males at 60% and females at 40% as its audience broadens. And you know what? You can probably thank Apple for closing that gap with all of its more fashionable wristbands, you know, color choices. Now, when you look at how people are using their smartwatch daily, 54% are using it for notifications and text messages, and 45% are using it for activity tracking. That's not a surprise. But what stuck out to me, 26% of people are using it for phone calls daily. Like that's way higher than I thought and really good for the upcoming Series 3 LTE watch. All right, just after last week's show, a report from Bloomberg revealed that Apple and others have been talking to movie studios about offering digital rentals for films just weeks after their release in theaters. Now, nothing has been agreed upon yet, but reports say Apple, Comcast, and now Amazon are looking for a delivery system that would make movies available for renting 30 to 45 days after its theatrical release for a price of $30. There's also been talks of a $50 price point just 17 days after a movie's release. Now, I asked the Twitterverse when the story first dropped, and a lot of people were just turned off instantly by the idea of a $50 price point as a rental. But you know what? I think this is a great idea. It's just another option you have to see a movie for a family or if you're someone who owns a killer home theater system and you want to bring some friends over, $50 is not bad at all. And again, it's just an option. It doesn't change what you have already available to you today. And if you want to pay for it, you can. You know what? I'm all about Apple and others getting something like this done ASAP. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can email us at theapplebite at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another Bite of the Apple. Okay, we're good? Yeah, okay. Hey, uh, is Cooley really bad at photography? What do you mean is he bad? Have you, have you seen his photos? They're, they're bad, I mean, that guy's like, that guy is blind as a bat. I'm surprised he's driving, man, that guy's, ugh. Hey, Charlie, he's bad, right? Who, Cooley? Yeah. Oh, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder. <laughs> so, no, he's bad, he's really bad, so. Who knew? No, I'm telling you, that guy is, I don't even know, I don't know if that guy should be working right now.